lot of what we're doing with this play is here's the real voices, here's how they are. We're presenting different transgender people to you and with their own, you know, problems and prejudices and what, whatever they have as well, perhaps. Not that they're perfect beings, but here, listen to them. They're real people, just like you, no better, no worse. And then ask yourself, how am I treating this community? So go all out! Wear that pink jacket with those tight yellow pants and that white wig! Put on that bow tie with your kick-ass combat boots. And while you're at it, throw in the crown jewels too! You are all that, and you look good too. Yeah. <laughs> what I would like other people to get from the, the play is the beauty of our experience being transgender and, and how brave it is to do this transition and how it's, it's liberating for ourselves as well as other people that, that you, can, you can be who you want to be in this world, in this lifetime. God meant me to be a woman. Here I am standing right here in this skin. You call it fate. <laughs> you can call it what you want, but yes, this is me comfortable in my skin. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Mm -hmm. okay. Woo! Yeah, is that false privilege? Motherfucker. <laughs> the message is not about just transgendered. It's about humanity. You know, it's about wanting to fit in, want to, wanting to strive for something better, wanting to be appreciated and treated like a decent human being. Everyone in the world has their trials and tribulations. You know what? Being down here in Skid Row reminds me of when I was homeless. Mm. in Hollywood when I was kicked out of my house at 16, 17 years old. Uh -huh. I was kicked out because my mother thought I was gay. And she's a Jehovah's Witness, Talk louder. Right? So being down here in Skid Row, I'm not nervous at all. I mean, I know there's lots of wolves and so forth, but I feel more comfortable around homeless people than I do, I guess, your average working stiff. How do I do it now, you ask? Now that I'm a pro. I would love to tell you that I still get excited that all of my sessions end in romance, disaster, or mutual understanding. But I'd rather give you the truth. I was totally blown away. Um, and even before I saw the show, you know, I was asked to do a pep talk. And I was, the one thing that I wanted to get across um, more to the women than the men uh, was that they didn't have to act out their hypo or hyper sexual energy at all. That it was plain to see how beautiful, how amazing, and how sexual they were. When she said you don't need to be sexy, it was just one of those things that we were just like, There's something bigger here than just delivering lines, finding our character, and delivering a play. It was we needed to educate, and I think in that, as soon as she said it, we all got it. You become so, like, questioning yourself, like, why am I like this? And that's not a good feeling. And then when you branch yourself out, and you go out to the clubs, and you, you, you start doing things, you're meeting other people that are like you, you realize that there's a connection that you don't have with your regular family. People that are involved in balls, and they don't really have a family at home biologically. Like, they don't have something that, that's there. So they look for other individuals to compensate for that. I love my people. When I say I love my people, I love all of them. I love any label that anybody wants to put on themselves. If you want to call yourself a potato, call yourself a potato. I'm not here to say this is the label for you or the label for you. I think it's all about empowering yourself and saying, this is what I define myself and I'm not going to let you define me. The term transgender specifically I embrace because, because of that term and what came with it, 
we have the transgender movement now. Personally, my goal is to be more involved when it comes to the political arena. And hopefully, you know, we'll be, you'll see mayors and governors and people that are really making the decisions and that they're trans. The message was, this leg is for praise. This leg for Thanksgiving. I've been broken, I'm not bitter, I'm better. Keep moving. God bless America for allowing me to be fierce for absolutely no reason at all. I wanted to humanize the experience. I wanted to let them know they, they blend right in. You know, because that's a big important thing, especially with trans people, they want to blend in. But you're blending right in by not blending in at all and by learning something that you did not know. Being stealth basically means someone living as male without really no one knowing about their trans history or trans um, identity from the past. I work as a graphic designer. Um, I feel like there's a lot of people who are, I guess, tolerant or open-minded, you know, and I'm very fortunate to have uh, the environment where I'm at, where I transitioned, because I transitioned uh, a year after working in that company. Standing in slight frees me from the burden of society's labels. You know, from birth, certain things were expected of me. The hair, the makeup, the shoes, the dresses, all trappings. Being the best of both worlds and being able to relate and identify as male and female is like a blessing from God. It's a two spirit that, you know, not ordinary people is able to have. So I think the role is just a gift to the world. Hi, he cooed. Hi. What's your real name, he asked. What? You stammered. It's cool, he said. I just wanted to know what your real name is so that when I look back, I can remember the name of the dude that I took the prom. Stand in your light. Nothing breathes or grows in the shadow, in the dark, and in the fear. Validate your brothers and sisters by honoring your age and know that your hardship, your pain, has created these beautiful babies before you. I mean, the ignorance in this community around me the health coverage for trans people, it's scary. I mean, if your, your documentation doesn't match, you can be denied coverage. I mean, I've heard horror stories where trans women were stabbed and they called an ambulance and the ambulance showed up and realized that they were trans and said, there's nothing we can do for you and they left them there. So the, trans people usually are seen as people with problems and too many baggages to carry to other people, so they just kind of brush them off into the outskirts of society until they die off. That's what they hope happens, but I don't know where they think that we're coming from. I don't think that there's some transgender breeding ground where they're you know, creating transgender people. I mean, we're, we come from families and homes that, just like they do, we're, we're no different. Shut the door, leave out the door. My personal hope for the play is that it travels, is that we get to do this show at uh, different cities. I want people to see it, you know, I want other trans communities to see it because it's so beautiful and it's the first of its kind, so I, I want it to be out there.